Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the CBCS Chapels podcast. Today, we are bringing you the message from our junior high chapel this week. Today's message was brought to us by our very own junior high math teacher, Miss Mackenzie Brandt, and her message is called Humble Service. We hope you enjoy it. Thanks for listening. It's so fun to see all your faces together because I get to see you in chunks throughout the day. But I'm like looking out and you're all here. So this is really special. So today we're going to be talking about what it looks like to humbly serve others. But before we do that, I have a little test for you guys. It wouldn't be a teacher talking unless there was a test, right? Um, So we are able to recognize an athlete, right, based off of the jerseys that they put on. So I'm going to test you guys. We'll see who the real athletes are out there. I'm just kidding. Um, If we could go to that first slide. Are you guys going to tell me what team this is? There you go. I did not know this until Monday, true fact. I don't watch football, so (laughs) truth be known. No one's surprised. (laughs) There you go. I knew my audience. I was like, you guys will come through. Okay. This one I know. (laughs) I know that one. Yeah, there we go. (laughs) Nice. All right. And what team? Oh, there we go. I was like, high school musical. We had some of you guys out there. (laughs) All right. I'm going to pray for us. You guys pass the test. I'm going to pray for us, and then we will get started. So if you guys could close your eyes and bow your heads with me. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this space where today we get to talk about you and learn more about who you are. Um, God, that's not something we want to take for granted, so we just thank you for that. God, I pray that you would humble our hearts, that we would have teachable spirits that are open to how you want us to grow and what you want us to learn today. And God, I pray these would be your words and not mine. And we love you. Amen. All right. So two of the competing teams in this world are pride and their humility. One of them seeks to serve others and the other seeks to serve themselves. One of them looks to the needs of others and one of them looks to their needs as the most important thing in their life. And so as Christ followers, we are called to clothe ourselves in humility and that is the team that we are a part of. That's how people are gonna know we follow Christ and that's the jersey that we are called to put on daily is humility. And so we're going to be looking at Philippians 2, 2 through 5. I'm going to talk a little bit about the second half of this chapter, too, because I think there's a lot in there about the way Christ embodies humility. But I'm going to read it for us, and then we'll get into it. It says, Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Do not be selfish. Do not try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Do not look out for only your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And that's Philippians 2, 2 through 5. So if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are going to live with him forever. And I know that's really hard for us to wrap our minds around, but it's forever. And it should change everything about how you live this life here on earth. And this life should be lived by humbly serving others with what God has entrusted each and every one of you. And he has entrusted you guys with so much. Jesus was the greatest to ever walk this earth, the son of God, creator of this world, eternal, all-powerful, all-knowing, unchanging, bearing the image of God perfectly, sinless, our king, and yet he chose to serve. Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. And I want you guys to think about this for a moment, because I don't think we realize how weighty this is. Nothing. He chose to make himself nothing. He could have come down to earth that first time on a horse with a throne, with a sword. He had every right to do that, and he didn't. He came as a child, which we're going to celebrate so soon with Christmas coming. 
He chose to make himself like us, and he chose to serve. And yet, most of us are going to spend our whole lives here on earth trying to make ourselves something. And we're just human. We're born with an expiration date. We're not all powerful. We're broken. And we don't even know a whole lot about this world that we live in if we're being completely honest. But Jesus came and made himself nothing. Again, so many of us are going to try to spend our lives trying to make ourselves something. We want to be acknowledged for our amazing skills. We want to be seen for how great we are. And yet Jesus set our example, and he made himself nothing. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He took the very nature of a servant. And so we are to seek to serve, not to be served. This is humble service. It's not thinking less of yourself. It's not going, oh, I'm just a nobody. It's not even really thinking of yourself less, but it's thinking of others more than you think of yourself. I'm going to say that again. It's thinking more about others than you think of yourself. Um, A book I read in college is Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I'm sure a lot of you maybe know Narnia, or maybe you've read some of his stuff, heard about him in Bible class. But he is an incredible man of God, and he wrote about what he thinks the humble man looks like. And so bear with me, because it does have some funny words in there. It's older. I hope that doesn't take away, though, from the power of what he's saying. He says, Do not imagine that if you meet a really humble man, he will be what most people call humble nowadays. He will not be a sort of greasy, smarmy person who is always telling you that, of course, he is nobody. Probably, all you will think about him is that he seemed a cheerful, intelligent chap, who took a real interest in what you had to say to him. If you do dislike him, it'll be because you feel a little envious of anyone who seems to enjoy life so easily. He will not be thinking about humility. He will not be thinking about himself at all. And so, you guys, showing humility, seeking the interests of others, it's walking into a room and going, there you are. It's not walking into a room and going, here I am. Aren't you so glad I'm here? It's going, how are you? There you are. And so I'm just going to go through a list of what humility looks like practically. It is not having to get the last word. It is looking out for what someone else needs. It's being the first to say, I'm sorry. It's not being easily offended. It's not getting defensive. It's listening. It's being more concerned with what God thinks of me than what others think of me. It is not thinking you are greater or better than others. It's not taking credit for things you didn't earn or deserve. Spoiler, there is nothing you have apart from what God has given you. No athletic talent, no smarts, no nothing apart from what God has given you. It's making decisions with others in mind, not just yourself. It's owning your part, even though the other person might not. It's understanding that you need Jesus. You guys, not having humility can be the thing that keeps us from an intimate relationship with the Lord. Because when we lack humility, we're saying, we don't need Jesus, I don't need him. And so when we humble ourselves before the Lord, it's saying, no, I do need you. Greatness is not buying your dream car. It's not building your dream house. It's not making it to the NFL or the MLB. Those things are great. I'm not saying they're not great. They are great. And I hope so many of you get to experience those things on your time here on earth. But that is not greatness. And that is not what God defines as greatness. Greatness is humbly serving others and following his example. And that is greatness in God's kingdom. Nine times Jesus was asked, who is the greatest? Everyone wanted to know, is it me? Who's the greatest? And let me tell you, in the kingdom it has nothing to do with shooting three-pointers, and it has everything to do with humbly serving others and pointing them to Jesus. And you guys, we're not going to do that well if we, if you, are the main focus of your days, your weeks, your months, your years, your life. You cannot be the main focus. 
Um, as we step back to our time with mentor groups, I want you guys to really be honest with one another, but at a minimum, be honest with yourself and with God. If you look at the thoughts that you have in any given day, are they mostly about yourself or are they about others? Are you the only one benefiting from the gifts and the talents that God has given you? Because if we spend this life serving ourselves with our gifts and making all our decisions based off ourselves and thinking more about ourselves than others, then you guys, that is not a life well lived. That is a life that missed it. This life is not to indulge. It's not what it's for. The world's going to tell you it is. It's about you. Serve yourself. What do you want to do with your life? That's not it. It is not to indulge. And I promise you from personal experience, it is always going to leave you one of two things, feeling empty or longing for something more when life becomes about serving yourself. In 1 Peter 5, 5, it says, All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. God is very clear about how he feels about pride versus humility. A lot of you guys wear a lot of different uniforms. You got your CVTS uniform. You got hockey, volleyball, football, baseball. You wear a lot of different uniforms. And it's so important to come to school in your uniform, right? Like we would send you back if you didn't. And if you showed up to your game without your jersey, they'd be like, sorry, you're sitting out today, right? Like, we all understand it's so important to show up in your uniform, right? Yeah? If you didn't show up, they'd be like, hmm, you're not playing today. Oh, you're not going to be at school today. Go back. Um, you guys, even as important as you know that is, it is so much more important that as a follower of Christ, you are clothing yourself in humility every single day. Even more important than coming to school in your uniform. Even more important than showing up at your soccer game in your soccer jersey. And so I've given each of your mentor group leaders verse cards with 1 Peter 5, 5 on them. I want you guys to put it somewhere you're going to see it every day, whether that's your mirror when you're getting ready in the morning, or maybe it's on the front dash of your mom's or dad's car. But I want you guys to look at that every morning because as followers of Christ, we are called to clothe ourselves with humility. So I'm going to pray for us before we leave. And dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for who you are and just the grace that you've given us as we figure this life out and um, strive to follow you. God, I pray for just really deep and meaningful conversations in our mentor groups. I pray that there would just be vulnerability and honesty. God, I pray that we would challenge one another to just walk in humility as we follow you. And God, we love you so much. Amen. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.